Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. And in today's presentation, we'll be looking at predictive maintenance. I repeat, predictive maintenance is the topic of today's discussion. And in today's discussion, uh, I will be illustrating some of the features in StatCraft P. What is StatCraft P? StatCraft P is a web-based solution for data science with Python. I will be following a case study uh, approach to uh, data analysis. So what is the first case study that we have? The case study is about predictive maintenance in aircraft engine failure. So here we are interested in predicting the aircraft failure given certain variables about sensor related information of the aircraft engine. So this is a case study on the predictive maintenance in aircraft engine failure. Even before I show you the data, let me address this question as to what is predictive maintenance. Predictive maintenance is a technique that uses data analysis tools and techniques to detect anomalies in your operation and possible defects in equipment and processes. So you can fix them before they result in failure. So the first objective that we have is to predict engine's total time to failure. So this is a pretty straightforward objective. Our objective, our goal is to predict the engine's total time to failure. Even before I show you some of the other uh, output here, let me just quickly jump to Excel sheet and show you the data set. So this is how the data set looks like. As you can see here, I have got ID. This is the machine ID. And I've got uh, information about cycle, the three variables related to setting, and there are 21 variables related to sensor level information. And also after the sensor level information, I have got total time to failure, which is a scale variable as you can see. And another variable, which is called as binary, which indicates whether a component has failed or is it still functioning. If you want to know what is the sample size of this data set, I've got around 20,633 cases, which is a healthy sample size for uh, any analysis. Let me quickly go back to PowerPoint and show you what uh, we are trying to do here. We are trying to predict engine's total time to failure. The technique that we will be using here is called as regression analysis. As you know, we use regression when the dependent variable is scale, and we are trying to predict a scale dependent variable given a set of independent variables. To execute this analysis, what I will do is, I will be using a tool which is called a StatCraft. Now, this is how the data set looks like in StatCraft. This is the data set which you were seeing some time back. Now, to run a regression analysis, I can open the analysis tab, then go to regression, and choose the option linear regression. I have entered here the total time to failure as the dependent variable and the rest of the variables related to uh, sensors as the independent variable. Additionally, you can also choose setting related information also as the independent variables. Now, StatCraft provides a wide variety of options. You can look at the Durbin Watson statistic or to identify multicollinearity, you can check the conditional number, so on and so forth. I will choose the option save and click on the option predicted values to save the predicted total time to fail. Then you can just choose the option OK and go to the output to see some of the interesting output that StatCraft produces. There's a whole lot of uh, output that you are able to see. Let me scroll down and show you what is necessary. I want to see the output corresponding to linear regression. And this is the output that StatCraft uh, shows me. StatCraft shows me what all libraries it has installed in the backend. It has run the OLS engine, which stands for ordinary least squares method. And then we are moving on to model summary. This is uh, some description about uh, what is the R square value, adjusted R square, so on and so forth. We are also able to see the ANOVA table. 
and finally we have the coefficient stable uh, for each of the independent variables we have generated the coefficients the corresponding standard error p statistic value and the p value is also reported you can also see the confidence interval being shown here what i will do is i will click on view option and uh, go to data as you click on the option data and scroll to the extreme right side you can see the predicted value here for the total fail days to fail you can see for the first machine the expected day of uh, the expected days the expected number of days to fail is 156 days in reality it has failed in 191 days for the second machine it is 153 days 163 is the predicted value for the expected time to fail so on and so forth now to make better sense of the output what i will do is i will go to statcraft and show you some of the output you can see the model summary output what is very very important here is the r square value the r square value that we are getting is 0.6 which means that 60% of the variation in the data is explained by the set of independent variables that we have i repeat 60% of the variation in the dependent variable is explained by the set of independent variables that we have remember that if r square is closer to 1 it means that the model fits the data well on the other hand if r square is close to 0 it means that the model does not fit the data well so this is the coefficients uh, table that we are seeing so some of the important variables here and the p value is very very important here for example for the variable cycles the p value is greater than 0.05 indicating that the independent variable cycle is not a important variable in predicting total time to failure on the other hand when you look at uh, other important uh, independent variables all of these variables have a p value which is smaller than 0.05 0.05 is the level of significance we compare the p value with level of significance and if the p value is lesser than 0.05 it indicates that that particular variable is important on the other hand if the p value is bigger than 0.05 we conclude that this particular independent variable is not important so our main conclusion is the settings related information as well as the sensor level data are all important and they are crucial in driving total time to failure so what is the conclusion of this analysis as we have just now discussed we have performed a regression analysis and the benefit of doing a regression analysis is that we have been able to build a regression model to predict the total time to failure of aircraft engine so this is as far as the first objective is concerned let me show you another example of feature extraction so feature extraction is a very important technique especially when you have a lot of independent variables and you uh, are not sure which of these variables are very very important which of these variables are which of these variables are contributing to total time to failure to do this let me quickly show you statcraft i will click on the analysis tab we have seen the option regression now what i will do is choose the option feature selection here you have uh, one of the option which is called as classifier let me click on this option now i need a classification i need a binary variable like yes or no and this particular variable i have entered as the dependent variable i have got 21 different variables related to sensors which i am using as the independent list once i do this i can click on the option okay and go to output here you see all the output that i had generated earlier i am not looking at linear regression now i would like to look at feature selection so this is the output of uh, feature selection uh, statcraft is showing you what are some of the libraries that has uh, that it has uh, used at the back end if you want you can pull out these uh, python codes and uh, try out uh, advanced analysis 
So this is the output of uh, feature selection. Now, this is the variable importance table, and this variable importance table becomes important because out of 25 variables, we want to identify which of these variables are crucial in driving failure. And therefore, let me go back to the PowerPoint and show you the interpretation of the table. So this is the graph that has been generated from the table. From this particular table, you can see from the feature selection, output variable 21. Out of the 21 variables that we have, most critical or important sensors are sensor number 15, sensor number 7, 12, 4, and 11. You can see the contribution of each variable here. And uh, it is pretty obvious that sensor number 11, 4, and 12 are crucial when it comes to determining the total time to failure. With this, I will move on to the objective two. Here, what are we interested in? We are interested in predicting whether aircraft engine will fail or not using machine learning algorithm. I repeat, we are interested in identifying whether or not the aircraft engine will fail. To do this, we will be using a machine learning algorithm. And the name of the machine learning algorithm is called as MLP classifier or multi-layer perceptron classifier. To execute this output, let me take you to StatCraft. I will go to data, click on the analysis tab. You see a whole lot of options here. Let me choose the option machine learning and say MLP classifier. The dependent variable here is a nominal variable. It has two outcomes. That is the aircraft engine either fails or it does not. So the binary outcome is what I'm choosing as the dependent variable. And as usual, I'm choosing sensor related data as well as the different setting related uh, information uh, along the independent list. I can click on the option OK and then choose output. In the output window, you will be able to see the output of MLP classifier. So this is the MLP classifier model that we have just now run. And as before, you can see all the backend codes that uh, StatCraft has used. These are all the Python codes that StatCraft uh, is using at the back end. And uh, this code is used to generate the model prediction for MLP classifier. You can see the confusion metrics here, both for the training as well as uh, the test. Now to make better sense of this output, what I will do is I'll take you back to the PowerPoint from where we can interpret this particular output. As you can see here, one of the important uh, output here is what is called as the feature importance table. Now from this feature importance table, you can see all the variables and the corresponding importance of each and every feature being shown here. What do we learn from this particular table? From the feature extraction, we can conclude that variable sensor number 4, 11, 7 are contributing more to predicting failure of the aircraft engine. This is very, very important. The sensor number four, sensor number 11, and sensor number seven are very, very useful in driving the failure of uh, aircraft engine. Further, if you look at the classification report corresponding to training and test, both these tables are shown here. Now, what do we learn from this table? If you look at the accuracy of the model, it is 0 0.84 indicating that MLP model gives an accuracy of 85% predicting failure of aircraft engine. This is in the training data. When you compare it with the test data set, we are approximately again getting the same answer, which is 85%, which indicates that this is a good model. 85% is a high level of accuracy. So this model is accurate as well as a robust model. Why do I say it is a robust model simply because for both training and test, we are getting consistent results. Finally, what are some of the applications of uh, predictive maintenance? 
there are numerous benefits that we can derive from this particular analysis. We can recover revenue. We can uh, plan for smart replacement. We can decrease the planned maintenance. We can uh, look at asset availability. We can improve workforce. We can lower the risk and decrease service loss. With this, I have come to the end of today's presentation. In today's presentation, to summarize, we have seen three main things. One is what is predictive maintenance? And with the help of aircraft engine failure data, we've been able to run regression, feature extraction, and we've been able to run a machine learning technique, multi-layer perceptron, to determine which are the key drivers of failure. With this, I have come to the end of today's presentation. I request you to subscribe to my channel and I thank you very much for watching today's presentation. Thank you and have a very good day.